Happy Easter. I'm glad you can join us today in worshiping our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, this beautiful Easter morning. I know that I am thrilled to serve a risen Savior. And I know that you today, as believers in Jesus Christ, are celebrating today the hope and peace and joy that we have because of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm glad you could be with us today. Even though it's through our live streaming, you are here spiritually. We come together as God's children. And we say thank you, God, for his son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for this opportunity today to worship our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And in the life that we're living in now, and with all the fear and all the sickness and all the uh, hardship that seems to be coming our way, what better way to celebrate and to encourage ourselves and to prepare ourselves for what's next than to say and know and believe that we serve a risen Savior who is alive today, who knows everything we're going through. He sees our tears. He knows our fears. He has conquered Satan once and forever on the cross. We celebrated Good Friday for the good that Jesus did on the cross for all of us. And we celebrate now our risen Savior and the victory of the cross and what Jesus did on the cross. So join me today as we sing our first song, Christ the Lord is risen today. Couldn't think of a better song to start out with Easter celebration. Christ the Lord is risen today.
Let us pray. Holy Father, awesome God, it's good to be able to put our petitions before you. We thank you and praise you for our Lord Jesus, who this day we, we celebrate because he was raised from the grave. Thank you for this awesome gift, the gift of life. Father, we thank you for Pastor Danny and Cindy and ask that you continue to bless and watch over them. Be with them, Father, and overshadow them. Lead Pastor Danny in the way you would have us to go. <clears throat> we thank you for each and every member of our church. We ask that you just bless all the elders of our church because we have a number of them that can't even come and worship. But they are able to visit with us through the te new technology. We thank you and praise you for every good and perfect gift. Father, we ask that you would be with our president. Just lead him, Father, as you would have our country to go at this time. Be with each and every person. Keep them safe, Father, from this uh, coronavirus that, that is hurting us and hurting our fellowship. Be with us. Keep us in your hands in all that we do. And we give you all the thanks and praise. In Jesus' name. Please join me this morning in the responsive reading. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my sin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, how my heart yearns within me. But now Christ is risen from the dead, and he has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. This morning, it is my privilege, and it's going to be a blessing for all of us, to let you know and introduce our special music. This is from one of our youth, Olivia. She's a gifted pianist. She loves music. We are blessed to have Olivia and Eden and Steve with us. And today, through videotape, we're going to see an offering, a gift offering from Olivia to God and for us as we celebrate our risen Savior. I am so thrilled to see our youth getting involved in our worship to the Lord Jesus Christ, our children and our youth. So I know you will join me in thanking God for this gift from Olivia as she plays the piano for us this morning.
blessing. Thank you, Olivia. You have you brought joy to our hearts today through your gift of music and through your gift to God and your gift to us. Church, I want to let you know I believe we're safe and secure for the future until the Lord returns with talent like God has placed right here in this small little church in Barnesville. Olivia, thank you, and God bless you. I want to take this time to encourage all of our parents why we're separated because of the coronavirus and why we're streaming our services online and <clears throat> joining together spiritually. Videotape your children as they play, your youth, your, your, your children. Uh, video uh, some of their talents. I want to share that every week. I would like to highlight our youth, our children every week to uh, encourage us and to know that the future is safe and secure in the hands of God Almighty. I rejoice today with what God is doing in his church here at Barnesville and his church worldwide. Again, thank you, Libby. You touched my heart. It's my privilege now. He doesn't need any introduction. Reverend Michael Matard is a friend of Barnesville's. He's a brother of mine. And we all love him and he loves us. Pray with him and share with, with me as we uh, take a moment with Michael, Reverend Michael Matard. Good morning, Bonzo Baptist family. I bring you greetings from Hope Fellowship Church and your Montgomery Baptist Association. As you celebrate this Resurrection Sunday, I want to be among the first to celebrate with you. Jesus Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So much about our lives have changed in recent weeks. These turbulent times surrounding the coronavirus have upended schedules, finances, and plans. But one thing remains, God's steadfast faithfulness to his people. As we read in 1 Peter chapter 1, 3 to 4, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable and undefiled and unfading. Of course, our Easter celebration will look very different this year as churches forego congregational gatherings in favor of online services in the wake of this coronavirus. But God, but the good news of Easter is imperishable and unfading. Let us pray. Okay, our Savior has risen this Easter day. The resurrection of Jesus reminds us that God makes all things new. He has given us the same resurrection power to live free from sin and death, to have a life fully alive. May we remember the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus and his resurrection from the grave. Thank you, God. Thank you that you make all things new. Thank you for the victory and power in your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that you hold the keys over death. Thank you that we know that you are in control regardless of what situation we find ourselves. Thank you by, that, by your might we are healed in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus was raised from the grave, paving the way for us to have new life with you. Thank you that you had a plan. Thank you that you made a way. Thank you for protecting the elders, the pastor, the leadership of Bonzo Baptist Church. Thank you for your protection of our health care workers. Thank you for providing for the for, for the for those who are desperately in need. Thank you for giving us patience because in these difficult times, God, we need your patience. We need your patience in the mighty name of Jesus. We confess our needs to you. Fresh 
new and again. We ask that you will renew our hearts. You will renew our minds and lives for the days ahead. Keep your word of truth planted firm within us. Help us to keep focused on what is pure and what is right. Give us the power to be obedient to your word. And when the enemy reminds us where we have been, hissing his lies and attack on us, Lord, we pray that we can come to you trusting you in your words as you speak to us loudly and strongly, reminding us that we are safe with you. Father God, we thank you. We give you the praise. Shine your light on in us, through us, and over us. Make, may we make a, a difference in this world for your glory and purposes. May all your plans succeed and may we reflect your peace and hope in this resurrection season in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, that we can take that hope and, and share that hope to those who are desperately in need of a Savior. Father God, we thank you. Thank you. Be to you, O oh God, for your indescribable gifts. To you be glory and honor this resurrection Sunday. In the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people say amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Reverend Michael Matard, for that reminder that we are free, set free from sin, set free from fear. We are set free from doubt. We are set free from a fearful spirit because of Jesus Christ today, as believers in Jesus Christ today. My prayer is that everyone listening today knows who Jesus is personally and has called on the name of Jesus for salvation. So they too can stand here today, a Resurrection Sunday, and say, my hope, my peace, my joy comes from my risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you don't know him today, please don't leave today. Don't turn this channel off. Don't, don't make another uh, decision until you call in, on the name of Jesus Christ. And later we'll talk about that more, about the victory of Jesus. What greater song to lead us in, Reverend Michael, than the song, He Lives. Let's sing together.
now to uh, share with you a thought um, and a praise in every way. I will tell you that one of our praises is Susan is going home from the hospital and she's doing better. So thank you, Jesus, for answering prayers. My brother-in-law, Rob, that all of you prayed for, he's home recovering. Thank you, Jesus, for answering prayers. June is home recovering. Thank you, Jesus. Arlene is home recovering. Billy, is in uh, rehab, recovering from her surgery. God is blessing us in every single way. Let's give him the praise and the honor for that today. Normally, this is when we would take up our offering. And I do have the plate, but obviously I can't pass the plate around. But we have made ways for you to be able to still give your tithes and offerings to the church so that we can please continue. It's even more important now than ever as we're trying to help so many people as much as we can that we're faithful to God with our tithes and prayers, uh, offerings. So please, if we made it, uh, it's on, on your bulletin, your, your, on the announcement side, but you can mail in your tithes and, um, to the church and just put giving right on the envelope. Nobody opens those if it's marked giving. They're all put in the envelope and handed to our treasurer, who then opens them himself. Um, and deposits it, makes it uh, the deposit. So no one knows what your giving is if you just put giving on the envelope. Nobody opens that, except for the treasurer himself and uh, his wife, obviously. Um, secondly, we have made a, arrangements for online giving. If you go to our website, on the top right-hand corner, it'll say online giving. Uh, you can give online that way. And our treasurer, David, is working even now um, to see if there's another way we can give online with your actual check, uh, which is um, would be practically no, no cost whatsoever uh, to you. So we're working and trying to improve on that. Um, so again, uh, we thank God for your offerings and tithes, and just know that we are reaching out to many, many people with God uh, through that. It's our time now and our delight and my privilege to uh, share a song from Gary Cooley, who we're blessed to uh, sing in our choir and, and often leads us in solos. Join with me and Gary, with Gary now as he praises our Savior. I would like to wish you a very happy Easter. I hope everyone is safe and is being keeping their distance. Uh, I have. Uh, he is worthy to sing for you today. Do you wish? 
wish that you could see it all made new. Is all creation groaning? Is a new creation coming? And is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, he is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of Does the Father truly love us? Does the Spirit move among us? And does Jesus our Messiah oversee his little love? Does the God intend to dwell again with us? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, is David through and the Lamb of God to wrestle the same from every people and tribe. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy of you very much. I was sitting here just a minute ago as he was singing, and I was thinking to myself, I know that Ralph and Barb would love to have heard that and be part of this service today, but I know that they don't have uh, the technology in their homes. But isn't it awesome how God speaks to us? I think I'm going to see if I can loan them my computer, my laptop, during this week and let them watch the services from the home on my laptop. And I say that because maybe there's other folks that are out there today that you know don't have the technology at home. Loan them some technology and let them worship with us together. Uh, 
Thank you, Jesus, for that thought. Thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit. Now we have time where we're going to share some of your pictures. And I'm sorry for the ones that have texted just shortly, uh, just in the last couple minutes. Um, we weren't able to get them into the slides now, but you can add them. If you send them to us, we can add them to our Facebook page, and people can share them that way. So send them to uh, Luke anyway, um, and we'll get them out there today. Uh, we can still do that um, later. But share your church family for a moment. church family. Again, send your pictures in. We can still share them. No problem whatsoever. Let's pray as we get into God's word. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to come and to share your word. Thank you, Jesus, for your love and your mercy and your grace. Holy Spirit, have your way this very moment, this very day, as we look at your word. And all God's people said, Amen. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, Jesus is alive. He has risen from the grave. And because of Jesus' love, we all can experience joy, peace, salvation, and hope today. We are a love gift from God the Father to the Son, Jesus, as believers. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time anybody's called you a love gift? Been a while, probably. But you are a love gift from God the Father as believers to the Son, Jesus Christ. Every time Jesus looks down on his children, you and I, he sees the love of his Father. And he protects us and watches over us. God's word tells us that ladies came to the tomb of Jesus that first Easter morning to honor the dead, the dead to, to anoint him in every way, to do the right thing for the dead Jesus. They came expecting to find death, sorrow, and pain. But praise God, what they found instead was the sting of death had been removed. What they found was life itself. And we praise God for that this Easter morning. Mark 16, Mark, book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 6. 
It says, do not be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Praise God that we too can look beyond the cross to an empty grave. That's what we celebrate today. Part of what we're celebrating is an empty grave because our Lord Jesus Christ arose from the dead. We gave us victory over Satan himself, victory over fear, victory over death, took the sting away from all that and gave us a hope, peace, and joy, a foundation that's so firm that no matter what comes our way, including the coronavirus, our foundation will never be shaken in Jesus Christ. Our hope, our faith, and our joy lies faithfully in his hands and securely in his hands. Church, because of the love of God Almighty, our Father, the gift of our Son Jesus, and because of what he did on Calvary, we can celebrate Easter this morning, our risen Savior. And my prayer is that we have come together today, even though we worship online and we're not physically together. We are absolutely spiritually joined together through the Holy Spirit. And I say thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, for the comforter. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. For today, we rely on him more than ever to hold us together in unity as a church body spiritually as we celebrate you. But my prayer is that we came not just to celebrate Jesus, but to experience Jesus in a new and exciting way. To experience him in every way that he can and through we can. Join with me in this video as we celebrate just a hair, a little, little more of what Jesus is doing. celebrate an empty tomb. We celebrate a risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Darkness will come after us, but the light shines brighter than the darkness. Our Jesus, our Savior, shines brighter than anyone, especially if our Father is guiding us and directing us on the path. If we are allowing him to open doors and to close doors, if we're trusting in his will for our lives, for our own individual lives and our church life. We must trust that God knows best because he does know best. And we must trust that our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, is with us every single day. It's Easter every day of our lives as we Jesus Christ. We celebrate Easter every single day of our lives because of Jesus Christ and all that he has done. You're part of the family of God. And that is a real reason to celebrate today. And and it's a real reason for us to try to experience more of who Jesus is in our lives every single day by studying his word, by standing on this firm foundation, by reaching out and, and dropping off food or dropping off a card or making a call or, 
or texting someone or, or just doing an act of kindness in the name of Jesus Christ. We're sharing the light of Jesus Christ when you do that. Jesus knows our every thought. He knows our every move. He knows where we are right now, and he knows what we're facing this very moment. Psalms 139, 1 through 3, says it clearly. He said, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. He knows exactly who we are. He knows where his children are. He knows what they're facing. And he hears our cries and he comes to rescue us. And he will continue to come to rescue us. As believers, my prayer for everyone listening today is that you know Jesus personally yourself, that you have called on the name of Jesus personally yourself to ask for forgiveness, for the joy and hope and the peace, to recognize and confess that we are sinners. And yes, you've asked in the Lord to forgive you, to come into your life, to adopt you into the family of God and co-heirs with him, Jesus Christ. Acknowledging that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Jesus knows your fears. He knows your worries. He knows where you are. Do you believe that today, Christian? Do you believe that today? 1 John 3, 1 talks about the greatest love we could ever receive. See, 1 John 3, 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is exactly what we are when you call on the name of Jesus. You become a child of God, secure forever in the hands, the nail-pierced hands of our Jesus Christ, safe for all eternity. So I ask you today, church, what did you come when you joined us today on Facebook or on, on uh, YouTube or on our live streaming, whatever means you're watching this, what did you come to expect to receive today? Maybe some good news or uh, some good singing or some music that would touch your life or really handsome, great-looking pastor to, to give you a message of hope and peace. I don't know what you came expecting to find today. My prayer is that when you leave, when we're done, that you found the Lord Jesus to be more real in your life, to experience him more. And if you don't know him as your Savior, Lord, the greatest gift you could ever receive for yourself is the gift of Jesus Christ and salvation, forgiveness, to take away all your guilt, all your shame, to remove all your past, and to give you a hope, a future, a, a newness. There's a lot of religions out there that will say you have to buy your way into heaven. You have to pray your way to heaven. You have to go through different people to get to heaven. You have to go through different rituals. Let me tell you something. The Bible is very clear. Jesus Christ said, I have come to save, not to condemn the world, but to save the world. It says, if you believe, you shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth that you're a sinner, if you acknowledge who Jesus Christ is in God Almighty, and believe in your heart, that Jesus is the Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. What does saved mean? Becoming a child of God, adopted in the family of God, safe and secure forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Please acknowledge that. 1 Peter 1, 3, one of our own disciples, Peter, eyewitness account. 1 Peter 1, 3 said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope. Don't miss that. To a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We don't have a hope that we have to pay for. We don't have a hope that we have to get permission to get. We don't have to hope to bow down in front of someone and wear a man or woman just like you and I. Our hope is a living hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's free to everyone that will believe. His desires that none should perish. Go to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christian, go to the Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen your faith even now this very day. You know, Peter faced some hard times during this Good Friday and Easter season, the very first. He boasted he would never leave Jesus. Peter even fought for Jesus, drew his sword for him. And yet Peter failed, just like you and I, many times. He failed the Lord Jesus. And he denied even knowing who Jesus was. I know that Peter experienced shame and 
discouragement, just like you and I do when we sin against the Lord Jesus Christ. Question is, are we repentant? Do we learn from our mistakes? Do we call out the Lord for forgiveness? And we know that Jesus said, when you ask the Lord, when you ask me in your heart, Jesus said himself, when you ask me and, and seek me, when I come into your life, I will forgive you of your sins, past, present, and future. It doesn't give you a license to sin. It gives you the blessing to know that your sins are forgiven. It, it's just quite the opposite. It's not a license to sin. What it is, is it humble yourself to know that Jesus, when all this love that he had, Jesus who gave his life on, this, on the cross, Jesus, the, the one that God raised from the dead, Jesus, the one that left heaven's realm itself to come to give you and I life, it humbles us that somebody would love us that, not, that much, that someone would care enough about us to forgive us, to give his own life willingly so that we can live. It's not a license to sin. It humbles us to, to do the opposite, to live a life worthy is he worthy? The song that Gary sang, is he worthy? Absolutely he is worthy of all our praise and honor and glory. And I pray that's what we're doing today. You can put a smile back on your face. Hope and peace is yours. You can celebrate and experience Jesus today like never before. Even through a live streaming. The Holy Spirit's alive and well. And he's with you in your living room, your car, your work. The rehab centers, we have three rehab and nursing assistant living centers joining us today. Many residents are joining us today in our live stream. I say welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the worship of Easter. But my prayer to everyone, no matter who is listening, is where do you stand with Jesus today? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is your risen Savior? That's really all that matters. It's not your health. It's not where you're hearing this. It's not what... What, how much money you have, how much property you have, how much, how much uh, things that we own. It's where do I stand with Jesus Christ and is he my Savior and Lord? And I'll humble you in a minute and bring you to your near knees. It'll bring a smile to your face. We celebrate a risen Savior Jesus from the dead who gave us victory over death, victory over the grave. And I say that's a great victory. But I think we often forget that he resurrection also stands for Jesus' victory over Satan himself. When Jesus said, it is finished, I believe he looked Satan right in the eye. That's just my belief. And I believe he said, Satan, Lucifer, it is finished. It is finished. I am the Son of God. I am the King of Kings. <laughs> I am the Lion of Judah, and I have defeated you and all my children that will follow me. You have no grip over them anymore. You have no victory over them anymore. You have no say over them anymore. They are mine because the Father gave me of them as a love gift. And what the Father gave me, no one can take away from me. Come on, church. Let's get some tears moving today. Let's get some praising going on wherever you are right this very moment. Praise your Lord and Savior. One of my favorite passages when Jesus was raised from the dead is how Jesus went looking for Peter immediately. The one that denied him. The one that ran and abandoned him. One of the first things Jesus did was go to him to forgive him, to hold him to love him, just like he does for you and I. When we sin against the Lord Jesus Christ, when we sin against God himself, he doesn't run and hide in, in anger. He seeks us out even more. He wants us to know that he's a forgiving, loving God. He wants us to learn. He wants us to grow stronger. He wants us not to sin uh, at all. But he also knows that we are weak and he is strong. And he comes seeking us, just like in Mark 16, 6 and 7, through 7, that he came to Peter. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking, the angel said, you are looking for Jesus of Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. But listen, verse 7. But go tell his disciples and Peter. Go tell his disciples and Peter, the one that failed me. He's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. 
All the disciples failed him. Every one of us, you and I, have failed the Lord. God Almighty, we have sinned against him in every way. And his love for Peter is the same love he has for you and me. See, church, let me tell you, confess a little something. Jesus one day said, Danny, Danny, do I have your attention now? Danny, are you listening? I gave my life for you. And I know I have great plans for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you. Will you please, please come to me? And the greatest day of my life is when I say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me where I have sinned against you, God. Jesus, become my Savior and Lord. Father, thank you for raising Jesus from the dead to give me life. Jesus, I love you greatest moment of my life and I stand here today victorious over death, over coronavirus, over sin, over mistakes, over anger, over jealousy, over pride. Why? Because the day I called on my Savior Jesus Christ is the day he started a good work that he will complete and his end when I see him day, the day I see him face to face. First Peter 1 3, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Yes, I have read that twice. You're right. And you know why? Because I want us to get the message that we live in a living hope as believers in Jesus Christ. You don't have to confess yourself to any man. It does you no good. There's not a priest, a rabbi, or anybody else that can do anything for you. When it comes to saving you from your sins, only the name above all names, Jesus Christ, can forgive you of your sins. Cry out to the name, the one that can help you, the one that can forgive you, the one that died for you, the one that was raised from the dead to give you life. That's who you cry out to. Don't cry out to me or a priest or anyone else. Cry out to the name above all names, Jesus Christ, and you believe, confess, and you shall be saved. That's the message of hope today, a living hope. Not only that, it'll put a smile on your face. It'll put joy in your heart. It'll bring peace in a time of trouble. This is a fearful time we live in. We've never experienced this in our lifetime ever. There's, there's so many people that are, that are passing and dying. My prayer is that they know Jesus. That they have the hope that I have. And if I, one day the Lord calls me home because of the virus, I still have my victory because I'll be with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. But I still believe we have a work to do, and that's why he's protecting his church, his children. I'm not saying Christians aren't dying because they are. But they die in the name of Jesus to bring glory and honor to God. I believe that without a shadow of doubt. Know where you stand with Jesus today. Again, I will be here for an hour after the service. Call the church, 301-407-0500. Call my cell phone anytime, 410-459-3993. But whatever you do, know where you stand with Jesus Christ today. 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 And then you can sing as we are. We're going to end this message in this time of Easter on a rejoicing celebrating, uplifting, shout hallelujah, praising song. I know usually we give an invitation. The invitation is open, it's been open, and it'll be open to the day he called you home. But tonight, today, Easter Sunday, I want to end this Easter service with the uplifting, hallelujah shouting, praising God to the top of our lungs. Get off the couch, church. Stand up. Get out of your bed. Get Get out of your car, whatever it takes. Let's sing, redeem how I love to proclaim it. And don't be ashamed to sing it to the top of your voice. I am redeemed and I love to proclaim it. Thank you.
send cards, we can call, we can text, we can drop to our knees and pray and thank the Lord we are redeemed. And I'm not ashamed to proclaim it and I love to proclaim it. I just want to take this moment before we close this very moment. Thank you for joining us today. I want to thank and remind everyone of the ones that are separated today. We have at least 12 of our seniors that are by themselves today worshiping and eating alone at their homes. And that breaks my heart. I do want to know that your church and the deacons, and I want to personally thank Michelle at Dickerson Market. I called and asked Dickerson Market, Michelle, to make 12 meals yesterday, individual meals. She not only made the meal, she put her children and the staff put Easter eggs in there and, and chicken and macaroni and cheese and coleslaw and, and cupcakes and made individual meals. And then uh, one of our card ministry we, uh, gave us cards and individually handwritten out to the seniors. And then uh, myself and another deacon and, and um, uh, Luke and his wife, and we split those up and, and the deacons all prayed over it and, uh, by phone. And then we deliver those to the seniors' homes. I tell you that not to give praise and honor to the church. That's not what it's about whatsoever. It's about how you can still share the good news of Jesus and proclaim his love is by caring for each other. Please, have a great week. Please be faithful with your tithes and offering. The reason we can do these things 
is because of your tithes and offerings. Um, the church needs it more than now, not because of we're financially hurting, but the needs are great, and we need to, to meet those needs as much as we can. I do want to thank again Dickerson Martin for participating in that and sharing in the cost. And I pray God blesses you and keeps you safe. I pray God blesses and keeps all our church family safe. God bless you. Lord, thank you for this Easter Sunday. Thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you, Lord, that we're still able to mail in our tithes and offerings to the church and we can do it online. Not for, it, for the church to gather money so that we can take those resources, turn them around and pass them out as gift resources to our church family and to our community. Lord, I thank you for the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you that you have met every need of our church. That's not the, the question here. I don't want anybody to understand, to misunderstand me. You have met every financial need of this church body at Barnesville Baptist, and I give you every praise and honor for that. That's not what this is for. This is for us to reach out even more in your name. Lord, I thank you. Have your way in our lives. Protect us. Lord, heal our land. Please hear our cries. May the way the world confess to you of their sins, and may you please heal our land of this coronavirus. May you bring us back together physically. I need my church family, Lord. I need to be around them. I, I miss every one of them. But Lord, I know it's in your time and your will, and I know your will is being done. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Lord, do not let this message be muted or taken away from any authorities. May it go out loud and clear. And I claim that in your son's precious name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you and thank you.